Hey guys, this is going to be a guide for the spirit. I'll be going from the basics of what she does and how her ability works all the way into some more advanced strategies of playing her, as well as touching base on a little bit of the counterplay for survivors as well. This is probably my favorite killer at this moment, and I'm really excited to share what I've learned with you guys. Okay, to start, we'll talk about some basics. The spirit's move speed is 110%, which is slightly slower than most killers that move at a 115%. Her terror radius is also slightly smaller than average at 24 meters compared to most killers that have a 32 meter radius. The spirit's ability is called Yamaoka's Haunting. After standing still and channeling for a brief moment, you become invisible and move at a highly increased speed. There's a limit to how long you can stay invisible and you can come out at any time to attack. After use, the ability goes on a cooldown based on how long it was used. While invisible, you cannot see the survivor's blood or any auras from perks like a nurse's calling. You can, however, see scratch marks that survivors leave from sprinting. There is also a clone of the spirit left behind when the ability is used that maintains the terror radius while she's invisible and attacking. As survivor, there's no audio cue for the killer's ability for as long as you stay in her terror radius. However, when outside the terror radius, you'll hear a vacuum sound when the spirit's using her ability and in close proximity to you. The spirit also has a passive ability called phasing. Basically, while running, the spirit will occasionally fade in and out of existence and appears to sort of teleport around. Not only does this make her look very spooky, but it also makes it very hard to track her as a survivor when you're being chased around, and it can sometimes get you some free hits. She also introduces three new perks of the game that are very unique. The first perk is Spirit Fury. Spirit Fury charges after two pallet breaks and makes it so the next pallet stun you receive breaks the pallet during the stun animation. This, combined with the perk Enduring, can almost guarantee you free hits against looping survivors. She also adds a new Hex perk called Hex Haunted Ground. This perk creates two active totems that are essentially trapped totems. If a survivor breaks either totem, the other one becomes dull and survivors are inflicted with the exposed status for 60 seconds. This means that they become a one-shot noun. Her final perk is Rancor. This is an obsession perk that reveals the position of all survivors when a generator is completed for 3 seconds, but your aura is also revealed to the obsession for the same time. You don't actually see the auras of the survivor, it's more like a noise bubble. Once all the generators are completed, the obsession becomes a one shot down and also can be killed. Now one of the most fun part, the mind games. Open walled pallets where the survivor can keep line of sight of you are usually awful places to be for killer, but the spirit works a little bit differently. You can set up in a position where you can see the survivor and then stand still to fake using her ability. The survivor sees you standing still and will assume that you're using the ability and will run away from their safe position. This will sometimes get the survivor to actually run back into you and give you a completely free hit. If you notice they aren't moving from their position even while you're faking the ability, you can just actually use the ability and teleport onto their face for the free hit. As long as you're able to actually predict correctly, you're in total control of the situation. The counterplay to this would be to just abandon the tile when you see you're faking their ability. But even forcing survivors off of tiles is a huge advantage as a killer, and a lot of the times will force them into bad spots where you could actually get hits anyway. This means that there's actually little to possibly no safe tiles against the spirit, and she can be a constant threat no matter where you are on the map. Now as we talked about earlier, the spirit can only see scratch marks while using her ability, unless she's running an ultra rare add-on. This means that generally, the counterplay to her would be to stop sprinting when you think she's chasing you while invisible, and try to go somewhere kind of unpredictable. Even the counterplay to Spirit has counterplay though. As Spirit, if you're chasing someone who's too far away to catch quickly, but you can maintain line of sight, you can actually fake using your ability and wait for them to begin walking to attempt to counterplay it. Once you see the direction that they're walking, you can actually start using your ability to head in the direction that they were going. Remember that you do have collision while invisible, so you can sort of feel your way around to finding them. It's important to keep in mind that like any other killer, you have to base your strategy around the survivors that you're playing. If a survivor doesn't try to counterplay it by walking, then you'll just end up letting them get more distance than they should. Sound is also a pretty big deal for spirit. If the survivor that you're chasing is injured and they don't have iron will, their cries of pain can be heard while using your ability and you can almost find them solely on that alone. Something interesting about spirit is the fact that she doesn't have a vault animation. 
From the survivor's point of view, the spirit just kind of stares at the window for a second and then appears at the other side. Knowing this, you could actually use this to help you with your mind games. If you're chasing a survivor around a window, you can pretend like you're vaulting by standing still when looking out the window, and then turning around and leaving to catch them in a bad position for a free hit. If you haven't caught on by now, this killer is basically Mind Game City. You can constantly keep the survivors guessing and they can never be 100% sure of what you're actually doing. The fear of not knowing can also cause a lot of panic, even into experienced survivor players. Sometimes you can get hits even when not making the absolute correct play because they become too worried about where you could be. That being said, her power is also definitely not a 100% guaranteed hit on use. A lot of tiles will end up leaving you having to predict what the survivor will do, and if you guess wrong, you may end up getting nowhere at all. Obviously, practice helps a ton, and her ability seems to have an almost never-ending skill ceiling. There are a lot of perks that have good synergy with Spirit. Predator is the immediate thought for most people, since Spirit relies on scratch marks to track, and while it does make a straight line to the survivor, it's actually not too hard to track without it. The hardest part of following scratch marks is the fact that they fade in slowly instead of appearing instantly, and Predator doesn't fix that. Strider also makes a lot of sense because noise is the other way to track people while they're invisible, but it could also be sometimes harmful because it can make the survivors sound closer than they really are. These are both very viable perks, but you can learn to play without these and free up room for more useful perks instead. The obvious choices for killers still apply for Spirit as well. Whispers is probably the best tracking perk in the game, as well as Barbecue and Chili being insanely strong at blood point generation, as well as keeping up constant chases for pressure. Because of the way sound works for survivors, it's actually extremely useful to have a large terror radius. This makes Distressing a pretty strong perk for Spirit, as it increases her terror radius to around 30 meters. This combined with Whispers can help you get potential gen grabs, as well as generally making it harder for survivors to tell when you're using ability and when you aren't. Some other good options for perks are things like Make Your Choice, since you can get back to the hook pretty quickly with their mobility. Nurse's Calling is always a good choice for any killer, but remember that you can't see the auras while you're invisible. Game slowing perks are extremely good for her as well, such as Hex Ruin, Pop Goes the Weasel, and Sloppy Butcher. Utility perks like Agitation are also viable on every killer, so you can feel free to use any of these as well. The Spirit's add-ons are honestly pretty straightforward and bland. Most of them are pretty basic power-ups to her ability that scale with rarity. There are a handful of different sets that do different things for her ability. For instance, there's a set of add-ons that increase her movement speed while invisible. There's also add-ons that make her invisibility last longer. There are also ones that help you with the cooldown of how quickly her ability regenerates. And there's also a set that increases the speed that you charge her ability so that you can go from visible to invisible faster. There's also a purple add-on that moderately increases speed, duration, and cooldown, which is basically just a giant all-around upgrade. As for the basic add-ons, I'll throw together a side-by-side -side of the spirit using her ability with no add-ons and using two very strong add-ons in the same location so you can roughly see how much having these add-ons does for you. Okay, on to the interesting ones. There are two add-ons that affect spirit's passive phasing. The Juniper Bonsai makes phasing happen more frequently, and the Dried Cherry Blossom does the same, but also makes the duration of the phase last longer too. This video shows what these add-ons look like when stacked. This makes keeping track of the spirit very hard to survivor, but doesn't seem to be as strong as it seems like it could be. Even with double stacked phasing add-ons, the reduced movement speed of the spirit makes it still almost impossible to mind game pallets against good survivors. It looks a bit confusing and it might help with some of the smaller ones, but it's really not that incredibly effective. One of, if not the best add-ons, is Father's Glasses. This add-on makes blood appear while using her ability, and otherwise it won't show up at all. This makes tracking insane because there's no way for an injured survivor to stop bleeding. With this add-on, you could almost guarantee a hit if the survivor you're chasing is injured. The spirit's other ultra rare add-on is called the Mother-Daughter Ring, and it is questionable in strength. What this add-on does is it makes you move tremendously faster while invisible, but it also takes away your ability to see scratch marks. This makes it almost impossible to track the survivors unless you combine it with the other ultra rare add-on that lets you track blood. The only way I could figure out to make this add-on useful was to combine it with the green add-on that increases your charge time of the ability. This makes it so you can quickly get from going invisible to the last spot that you saw the survivor and tracking becomes almost not needed. In most situations, you'll still be left heavily handicapped by the lack of scratch marks, and using your ability in general chases and power loops will still be extremely difficult. All around, I'd recommend staying far away from this add-on unless you're planning on basing your entire build around it. The strongest add-on the spirit has is the Prayer Beads Bracelet. 
This makes the vacuum sound that warns the survivor of her ability non-existent. That means the survivors have absolutely no way of knowing if the spirit's invisible near them or not. This, combined with a default terror radius of 24 meters, makes it incredibly easy to get generator grabs when combined with whispers. When whispers turns on, if you notice a generator is around 32 meters away, you can start using your ability before they ever hear your terror radius and sneak up and get a grab with absolutely no counterplay whatsoever. The last set of add-ons that we haven't talked about are her reappearance add-ons. These add-ons both increase the speed boost she receives when coming out of invisibility, while also making it last slightly longer. If you stack these add-ons together, you can get an extremely big speed burst when coming out of her ability. You can use this to catch survivors off guard, especially if they're waiting on a pallet for the stun. These add-ons add a whole other layer of mind games when playing pallets with spirits, so you now have the threat of quickly channeling your ability and then reappearing to speed boost swing on a pallet. I would consider these add-ons some of the strongest, and you should most likely go after them on the bloodwebs if you see them. Alright guys, that's going to be it for the video. The Spirit's an amazing killer that has so much outplay potential, and I think there's probably even more things you could do, even beyond what I've shown in this video. If you guys enjoyed this, feel free to throw the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more similar content. I'm also open to any feedback you guys might want to give me in the comments as well. As always, thanks everybody for watching and enjoy your games of Spirit, and I'll see you later. I'll see ya.